Fruit sugars are not the same as refined sugars. Hey, everybody, I thought I would chat with you guys and gals a little bit about this today. So, you know, this is one of these topics that's going to have a bit of nuance, but if people need to understand it, you know, they'll say things like, well, you know, it's it's uh, natural sugars aren't a problem. Or other people say, well, yes, they are. Uh, it's sugar is sugar. But that, that really isn't the case. Our, our concerns with sugar are not the fact that it's simple carbohydrate. Um, human body handles simple carbohydrates uh, just fine. Uh, glucose is our primary fuel source. And if you're metabolically healthy and haven't damaged your body, uh, haven't made yourself obese, all these other things, glucose itself is, is something that we thrive on. So when we understand why we're concerned with refined sugars, it's because of the fructose content specifically. Uh, because glucose is a different molecule than fructose and the human body uh, does not burn fructose as a fuel. Okay? It has to convert it into glucose and fructose itself is technically toxic. Right, and people can say, What? Yeah, it actually is. Uh, it, it is toxic, and it absolutely, when it reaches the liver, raises liver enzymes just like alcohol does, which is also a toxin. But to understand the process, our body actually handles fructose that we eat relatively well. It's fructose uh, in large amounts in the bloodstream that's the problem. So, let me explain. Under normal conditions, fruit is in a, is in a whole matrix. It has fiber, it, is, it takes time to digest, takes time to break down. Uh, to even get to some of it because of the matrix of the whole food, your gut flora has to break it down a little bit. And in other words, it usually reaches the lower intestine. Right? The upper intestine only absorbs a small amount of, of the fructose and the sugars and the glucose also that's in fruit. Uh, because again, we have to break it down. We have the fiber, we have the, the whole food component. Um, so, so it has to do that. When you're dealing with, with normal fructose, like it's just in a simple sugar form, uh, you know, either generally speaking, either, either table sugar, which is called sucrose, or high fructose corn syrup. Another big one, of course, would be honey. A lot of people say, well, that's, that's a, a natural sugar. Well, the natural is irrelevant. We're only concerned with the, uh, the chemical structure of it. And honey itself is very, very similar to sucrose. It is a refined sugar made by bees instead of humans. Well, well the fact that bees made it doesn't make it less refined or change the way that, that our, our body is concerned with it, okay? Right? Bees don't have magical properties, mystical magical powers to produce, uh, you know, a better refined sugar than, than humans do, okay? Stop appealing to nature. So when we're dealing with these things, our first way that our body deals with fructose found in our diet, the way that we, we've developed to handle it, is of course that our gut flora breaks it down and ferments it, okay? So when you're dealing with fruit uh, or the fructose that's in there, again, fructose being fruit sugar, it's, it's why we call it fructose, uh, our gut flora breaks it down ferments it, turns it into glucose, okay? And it's a, it's a nice slow process. You're not getting all of it at once. Uh, you're getting more of the glucose initially and then, and then the fructose takes time to get to all of it. And even the glucose to some extent, okay? So in that process, it converts most of it, uh, the majority of it. And, and that percentage can really vary, but it is certainly well over half of it. All right, so once we, we get into the bloodstream, though, uh, we do have enzymes in our body that can, in our bloodstream, a limited amount of those that can deal with it. And they can cleave it and turn it over into glucose. Uh, so this is one reason why we save over refined sugars. Yeah, there can be some inflammation and other stuff from it. But we can even handle small amounts of refined sugars, but those are absorbed in the upper intestine. So when you consume a refined sugar, I don't care if it's sucrose, high fructose, corn syrup, honey, whatever. By the time it reaches the, the upper intestine, it's already broken down. There's not really a significant difference uh, chemically anymore. There can be some, a few vitamins and antioxidants in the honey, but the, the fructose and glucose are usually free. The stomach acids breaks all of those simple sugars, that little bond in them down. Uh, and you have fructose free right there in the upper intestine ready to be absorbed, 
Okay, so that's the problem. Then, of course, uh, we have enzymes in our bloodstream that can handle certain amounts of fructose. Now, glucose we can handle an unlimited amount of. Okay, we, we can handle we can handle those starchy chains, everything just fine. We have an almost unlimited enzyme capacity for that. But fructose, because it, <clears throat> as you would expect in nature, we only have access to a limited amount of it. Our bodies just have never developed the enzymes to handle large amounts of it. They handle small amounts of it. But generally, even if you were to sit down and eat, say, 1,500 calories of bananas or watermelon, which would be an entire gigantic watermelon, by the way. Usually those are about 12 or 1,300 calories. If you were to consume that all in one sitting, you still have the enzymes in the bloodstream after what gets through the gut reaches it. We probably have, for most people, and again, People say, well, how many of those enzymes do we have? It varies. It varies based upon genetics, uh, your family, what part of the world you're from. Uh, I mean, so many different factors impact it. It's not a set amount. But it does exist in pretty much everybody. Okay? We can still handle pretty much all of it from, uh, from fruit, uh, if not the vast majority, even from a very large amount of fruit. Because again, most of it is handled by the gut. So then whatever gets through that, that pathway that reaches the liver, guess what happens? Then our liver has to deal with it. And our liver treats it just like alcohol. It has to make it into something usable, but it puts a load on the liver. Okay? Which is why large amounts of refined sugar can cause non-alcoholic fatty liver. Right? Fructose and saturated fat reaching the liver are what caused that. This has been found in the lab repeatedly, directly in the lab when we measure it. Okay, Those are the things that cause fatty liver at the highest rates. So <clears throat> that's the point is that it is possible because we're bypassing uh, the, the lower intestine and going straight to the upper, it is possible to exceed the enzymic pathway pretty easily with refined sugars and put a load on the liver. And even that small load on the liver, it can handle. It's fairly robust. It's that large amount that creates problems. That starts creating insulin resistance. It starts creating a non-alcoholic fatty liver. It causes, uh, you know, again, accumulation of visceral fat in the liver. Hey, but with fruit consuming quantities that are capable of doing this uh, is extremely difficult. Extremely difficult. It could be done in theory, but you'd have to really, really, really try hard. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.